I'm Carly Solander. I'm a floral designer to the stars, and I'm here to prove that you don't have to be a celebrity to surround yourself with beautiful blooms. I call myself the flower chef because I approach floral design like a recipe, step by step and with the flexibility to add a dash of your own taste. I want to show you that floral design is easy, accessible, and approachable, even in your own kitchen. I love entertaining, but I really just love spending time with friends and having them over and having good food and cheese and wine and all that sort of thing. But what makes it really special is having flowers on the table. So today I'm going to show you how to make a tablescape by putting one main arrangement and then two smaller arrangements on each side and then filling out the empty spaces with bud vases. For this party, I really want a garden rustic kind of look, and so I'm going to use a lot of texture. This color palette, I really want to keep it soft and romantic, so I'm going to stick with whites and pastels, like light pinks and purples, and then I'm going to add in a pop of a color, like a plum or a purple. I like to start with the fullest flower that I know is gonna take up a lot of space. So I'm going to pull some of these beautiful hydrangeas. It's like the size of my head, look at this. I'm also loving these white roses. These are called polar roses and they open so beautifully. This will be a focal point flower. These peach garden roses are going to look beautiful with our soft color palette. I saw one more thing I wanna add. It's called Veronica. You can just see the texture this brings. This really is going to give it a gardeny look. Right now we have a really soft color palette going on, which is really pretty, but we want to elevate it. So I'm going to add in this wine burgundy color. It's kind of like adding salt to your cookies. It just enhances everything. These scabios are great because they have a lot of texture and they're also two-tone. So it's picking up the white and that deep burgundy color from the ranunculus. It's a really fun flower to use too. So I'm going to grab the rest of that and then head back to my kitchen and put it all together. So I'm going to start out for the tablescape making one main arrangement and then I have these two smaller bases that I'll go on either side and these cute little gold votives that I'm going to use as bud vases. So this is about, I'd say six to eight inches high and about four to five inches across. But again, just something around the size. I like to use the gold though because it hides all the stems and I have this habit of cutting stems too short. So as long as the stems are in water, it's fine. First thing I'm going to do is work with the hydrangeas. Now, remember how big these are? These are super big. And obviously for the vase, one would fit in there. You just wanna make sure that the greenery is going to be above the top of the vase. That's what creates bacteria in the water and kills the flowers. So no leaves below the waterline, no matter what. Hydrangeas drink through their petals. And a lot of people don't know that. So you have to soak them before you put them in the vase. If you do this, you're going to get like a week out of them, I promise. All right, so the hydrangeas are ready to go in. I'm starting with them again because they're the biggest, they're our filler flower. For this arrangement, I wanna cut it where the bloom would almost rest on the top of the vase. So I'm cutting it at an angle. That creates more surface space for the flowers and the stem to drink. So just take your scissors and you can cut a vertical slit upwards if the stem is too thick. You can use this as the guide and cut all of the stems about that length. When I insert the stems for almost any arrangement and almost any style, I always put them in at an angle. I'm going to make a triangle form. Next up, we have the stock. So the stock is a filler flower. This flower is the one that when it starts smelling, it has that like rotten floor smell. I'll show you how to change the water in this after so that it doesn't do that, but just a fair warning. To strip these, go downward like I'm stripping rosemary or any kind of herb. So I'm going downward in one motion. So I have all of these stripped. I want these to be a little bit above the hydrangeas because I want that rustic feel. I want a lot of texture and movement.
We're using about six to eight roses, depending on how big they are. These are pretty open. If you want to force open some of the flowers, you turn it upside down and give it a little twist. Woo! <laughs> give it a little blow in the center. And look how much that opened. I'm going to add the stem directly through the hydrangea, which acts like the grid or a placeholder. So I'm going to stick the stem directly through. So I put that in. This gives it a more upscale look. It also keeps the rose in place. I'll place the roses in some of the hydrangeas and then some just in the empty spaces. And next are the delphiniums. I love the color. And we're going to use these to create some more structure. So I'm going to place these by the stock. And as you can see, I clustered a few of the flowers together, like the roses and the stock. It just gives it more impact. Make sure to turn the arrangement or you'll end up with a really beautiful one-sided arrangement. And this color is just adding that softness that we wanted. I'm going to place garden roses that smell amazing. They smell so good and they open so beautifully. I'm going to keep them a little bit longer than the other flowers. I like to have an in and out to my arrangement. It gives a lot of texture. If it was just all completely flat, it would be pretty boring. So let's cut these and get them in the vase. So I have these jewel tones, the pop of color, that are really going to enhance this palette. So I have these scabiosa and then the ranunculus. I will start with the scabiosa and both of these require no prep, just a little snip at the end. So we love these flowers. <laughs> we got those branches. So here they are. They're about as tall as me. What I do is I just break them off. And I'm following the lines of the delphinium. You don't want to make it look like it has ears. So we have the main arrangement. Now I'm going to make the two on the side and then the little bud vases to sprinkle in. I'm going to fill them, do assembly line, and then we'll put it all together. So we have all of our arrangements done. I wanna add in the greenery as the finishing touch. Now this is going to last about three to four days, but you can get a week out of this by changing the water. To change the water, place the arrangement under the sink, turn the faucet on, and let the old water flush out. I'm placing the main arrangement in the center, and then you'll just add in the two small arrangements on either side and fill in with the bud bases. Look how the flowers elevated the table. It's amazing, right? Now it's time for wine. Cheers. Use your extra flower buds inside your gift for the guest of honor. Place your gift in the box and use your fresh flowers to surround it. It adds a fresh flower touch to a thoughtful gift.